So uh, it's my great pleasure to um, introduce our next speaker, Lightning Talk speaker, um, Stuart Harris, who's a grassroots citizen science proponent. Stuart. I haven't got a background, okay? It's just very basic, um, keep it simple. What I have got, keep it simple, Stuart, okay? I'm gonna give you an acronym today from a grassroots citizen scientist. Okay, I basically got into citizen science consciously when I was about 30 years of age, back in 95. Coincidentally, that's the year that the, uh, the term citizen science was coined by Rick Bonney at Cornell, I believe. So in the last 25 years, I think uh, citizen science has kept me sane. It's been a wonderful journey. There has been ups and downs though. Okay, so getting back to the acronyms. We're covered in them, right? We've got acronyms coming out our ears these days. We're living in a COVID acronym at the moment, unfortunately. But the acronym I've got for you came to me in 2013 after a couple of years after I'd luckily um, or flukily discovered a, a new species of peacock spider and had a bit of media etc etc and was sort of thrust into the realm of citizen science as it was defined then. Luckily enough I got invited by the chief scientist at the time Professor Ian Chubb to do a talk to some industry people at Industry House in Canberra and I wanted to give them something. I remember going there in my um, high-vis stuff I was working at a vineyard at the time I had dirt all over me um, but yeah as a citizen scientist speaking with passion I think they received that, uh, that talk really well. And the acronym I came up with, I was thinking, what is the gel? What is the, what is the, what is the value exchange between science and citizen science? Okay, it just can't be one way. It can't be science just utilizing citizens as a resource, an infinite resource. On a personal human level, I think, you know, you have to acknowledge that the mental, emotional, even spiritual side of human beings that are engaging in activities like this. So into my little pea brain popped an acronym and it was something that both citizens and scientists need and that is AIR. Okay, AIR. The letter A. This is something, as a citizen scientist, I think um, would... Uh, be a reward for the efforts, the enthusiasm that someone puts into whatever project it is. A, A for access. Can the facilitators of citizen science project give citizens access to things such as um, locations, uh, areas of national park that are normally not accessible, private bits of land that aren't accessible, to laboratories, to equipment, to, to to luminaries in, in the scientific field who wouldn't normally sort of talk with scientists. Give them access to things that wouldn't normally be given. I, information. Give these uh, enthusiastic beings access to, um, you know, databases, uh, scientific papers. I myself have had trouble accessing some scientific papers as a reference point for my citizen science because I don't have a qualification. You know, I don't have a PhD or, or something or whatever, or even a science degree. I left school in year nine. Therefore, some places I couldn't even read a scientific paper relevant to stuff I'm researching. Um, access to training, as was alluded to in, in the, first, uh, the first talk today. You know, training is critical and it's inspiring and it's fun. That, if anything, I could leave you with today, other than this acronym, um, fun is a big part of citizen science and should always be considered. Okay, getting back to the acronym. R, resources. Hypothetically, you want someone to go and find peacock spiders on Montague Island. How are they going to get there? They're not going to swim. Provide the boat, provide the accommodation, provide the equipment. The resources need to be provided so that people can do uh, the citizen science. Uh, access to teams and groups, bringing people together. So the human resources part of it, organising, is also a resource that is critical in, in making a citizen science projects successful. Okay, so that went down quite well at this meeting with Professor Chubb. 
Yeah, everyone needs that, but I thought it was missing something. Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> okay. okay, P. Are you can you finish up very quickly yeah, with yeah, the I'm P? Finishing now. Okay, P, P for purpose. Give them a purpose. Give them an, a distinct, a defined purpose so they can focus their energies on that. I could talk more, but I'm not going to. Thanks very much.